what it was like for me, what happened, and what it's like today. And I always like to let people know that I am originally from Greenville, South Carolina. And back home, we lived in a little white house on a red clay road. We got our water out of wells. We took baths in big steel tubs. We had an outhouse, which I was locked in quite often. <laughs> we picked blackberries for fun, and I didn't even wear shoes until I came to the city. I had flaming red hair and freckles, and nobody else in my family did. And my brother told me as he had me locked in the outhouse one day, he said, I know why you look the way you do. He said, because the mailman is your daddy. <laughs> so whenever I would see the mailman, I would go, daddy! <laughs> oh, they were my daddy right there. Give me a hug. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he would uh, put his arms around me and tell me how cute I was and pat me on the head. And thank God for Alcoholics Anonymous in the book. And, the steps and sponsorship. I found out that that turned out to be a little pattern for me, actually. <laughs> that if you just put your arms around me and told me how cute I was, we were, were basically married at that point. <laughs> you know, and six months down the road, I'm going, what is your last name again? You know what I mean? <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I'm from a family of Baptist ministers, and uh, uh, my father got a job transfer, and we moved to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. And in the process of my father traveling back and forth, he found himself a little girlfriend, and he started dating her, but he still moved us up. My brother, my sister, myself, and my mother. And he moved us up to this little town called Lachlan, and he went to live with this woman, and uh, we stayed with my mother. And I need to tell you, when I spoke in Miami uh, a few months ago, I saw my brother for the first time in 30 years from that mere resentment. That my father took on a family that had a son and had two daughters, and he took care of them. I'm so thankful that I have the program of Alcoholics Anonymous and that freedom we get from resentment. Because that mere resentment is killing my brother. It's killing him. And when I met with my brother, he was one of the most angriest people I ever met. And he came and picked me up at the hotel, and we went back to his house, and he was just mad. And he stood there, and he just drank beer after beer. And the more he drank, the angrier he got. And he said, what you doing down here with all these white folks? I was like, uh. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, like, you know? <laughs> I mean, I thought he'd be mad if I said I was an AA. You know what I mean? Uh, visiting my friends, <laughs> and uh, he said, well, why are they all so white? <laughs> I, I got something I think I'm powerless over, I think. And, uh, <laughs> and he just got madder, and finally I looked at him and I said, I need to go back to the hotel, and now he's intoxicated. So he's driving at a high rate of speed, and he's drunk. And when I got to that hotel, Cindy and her partner were there. And I hugged them, and I was so glad to see you guys. And I was so thankful for the program of Alcoholics Anonymous. And maybe one day he'll find his way in here, and maybe not. But I know that I had to get back to you. And I had to leave him alone. And I did what I wanted to do. I was able to clean off my side of the street with my brother and come back to you here in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm grateful that I got, was able to do that again. So we moved to this little town called uh, Lachlan. And, and my mother had cleaned bathrooms for a living. And she made a, a solemn vow that her kids would never have to do that kind of work. You know? Thank you, because I was headed towards electrocution. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, so in my household, we couldn't use the word ain't. We had to talk proper English. Uh, it was 
very important. Education was very important to my mother. And so my mother decided when we came to Cincinnati, Ohio, that we would go to Catholic schools. Now, you'll hear me talk about my mother a lot. Because when I got to Alcoholics Anonymous, I assassinated her character daily. Thank God for the book and the steps that I was able to see that the way that things happened when I was growing up and the way that they really were were two totally different things because this is a disease of perception. Man, and I just bad mouthed my mother. Well, as we speak, my mother has mental illness. She doesn't believe in taking medication. And it's a hard thing to watch. But I'm thankful that when I'm missing what I knew her to be, that I can come to Florida and I can walk up to the north. And she'll put her arms around me as a mother would. See, I get everything I need in the hand, you guys. Even when I'm missing that, I get everything I need. And so I badmouth my mother. My mother worked as a waitress, and she sent my brother and sister and myself to private schools. That's how hard she worked. But when I got to AA, I told you that she was never around. And what I found out in Alcoholics Anonymous is that love is an action word. And that if I look at my mother's actions, she did just right by me. She worked to see that we had the best things in life. So now here I am with the nuns. I got a flaming red afro. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now you're overdoing it, Gary. I told you. Follow the directions. I'll just wait with both of them. Thank you, Gary. So I had a flaming red afro and, oh gosh, freckles on my face. I didn't even know black people were allowed to have red hair and freckles. You know what I mean? And, 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 I, and I got on this white blouse and this plaid skirt and black and white spawns and bobby socks. And I just got beat up on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Because it just didn't look normal. I looked at me every day. I had never, and all the people that I had come across in my little short life at that time, had ever seen anybody look like me. And I just knew that there was something different about me. My brother and sister didn't look the way I did. My mother didn't look the way I did. My father didn't look the way. I just knew that there was something different about me. So I'm at this little Catholic school, and my mother told me, you know, when we started Catholic school, she said, when they line up to go get that little white cookie, don't you take one. <laughs> and so, you know, me being the kind of child that I was, as soon as they lined up, I did too. <laughs> And I went up there and I did that, what my mother asked me not to do. And that was the story of my life. Whatever you asked me to do, I did the opposite. It was just something that happened automatically. <laughs> so there was this girl named Squeaky <laughs> in this Catholic school. Squeaky was like 6'10 in the fifth grade. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, one day they stoned me on the way home from school. <laughs> I ran in the house and I told my mother, I said, whoo, I'm glad I made it in the house. They was about to kill me. And my, whenever my mother sounded like this, I knew she meant business. She said, you know, Angela, at some point you're going to have to learn how to take care of yourself. And what I'm going to ask you to do, Angela, is to go back out there and you stand up to Squeaky. I said, you want me to do what? <laughs> she said, you go out there and you stand up to Squeaky or you stay in here and get the butt woman and I'm going to give you. And I knew what my mother felt like and I only knew what Squeaky's appeared to be. <laughs> I went out in that parking lot and I stood up to Squeaky and I said, my mother said I'm supposed to fight you. She said, well, come on in. So I drew my fist. <laughs> Closed my eyes tight as I could. <laughs> and I knew she was tall, so I knew I had to reach up. And I watched my brother get in fight, so he would put one foot back. <laughs> 